It is always a striking thing for me to go into a church building after the Monday Thursday service is ending, after nearly everything has been removed from the sanctuary, after the altar has been stripped. I wonder if over the course of these past few weeks, you might describe your life as having the feeling of being stripped. So much having been removed from the ways that we're used to living, so much having been stripped away from our usual lives. Some of these things have been stripped without our will. Some things we have voluntarily stripped of our lives in an attempt to save the lives of others. On Good Friday, as we enter a church in whatever way that we can, we recognize that all has been stripped except for one thing that never is, and that is the cross. Much like in our lives today where we're living and trying to do only those things that are considered to be essential, that are fundamental, that are the basics of what we need for our lives, the church invites us to look squarely at the cross, to see it as being essential, as being the thing that can never be stripped from our identities, from our recognizing who we are as children of God, as beloved in Christ. The cross is that which is essential for us. Friends, if you're watching this video in the context of a Good Friday worship service, then we have just finished hearing, we've just finished reading, engaging with an account of Jesus' passion, an account of his, his death, as was told to us by St. John. In that gospel reading, we know that Jesus was put up into a sham mockery of a trial. We read about how his body physically was stripped, how it was beaten, how he was marched through the city streets on the way to a place where he would be executed, where he would be hung on a cross. We cannot fully wrap our minds around what that experience was like for Jesus. Any words that we try to use, any, any thoughts that we can conjure up are going to fall short. The best we can do is simply give the best voice that we can to the fact that it was painful. It was painful in his body, but it tore him up in his spirit as well. He looked around in the midst of feeling that physical agony, and he saw that even his friends, those who had been closest to him, were no longer there. Most of them had, had left, had fled. And even as he went through this, he used the psalmist's words from Psalm 22 to say, My God, my God. Why have even you forsaken me? And yet somehow, out of this experience, we understand that God worked good. That out of this experience of shame, of death, God has saved us. God has given us the opportunity to truly live. God has given us life. As the words that we repeat, if, if you've done the, the, the way of the cross, we repeat these, these words, that God has made this instrument of shameful death to be the means through which we are saved. And also from Isaiah's prophecy, by his wounds, by the wounds of Jesus, as we understand, we are healed, we are saved. And so that's, the only way that we can call whatever happened on that first Good Friday, good. That's the only way that we can continue to come and to join together in whatever ways we're able and call this day a good day. Because out of it, God worked the best good that we can imagine. Good for us in our daily lives today, but certainly good for us in our eternal hope. And so I'd wonder for us, as we consider this day, and as we consider our lives, can you remember that this day tells us that no matter what we're experiencing, we are not alone. 
When your spirit has been stripped, remember what this day tells you. You are not alone. When your body may feel physically weak, this day tells you, you are not alone. When you are afraid, for any reason, maybe you just don't know how you're going to make ends meet, you don't know how things are going to turn out in your life, in whatever situation that you are holding, this day tells you that you are not alone. When you are hurt in any way by this world, this day tells you that you are not alone. Perhaps most importantly, when you have been the cause of pain or hurt or separation in this world, in your life, just like we all have been, this day tells you that it is not too late, that with God's help, healing, and reconciliation, in some ways through God, can begin. Ultimately, what this day tells us is that this experience of being stripped does not last forever. I know that I'm dipping my toes into Easter waters here, but friends, we live on this side of the resurrection. And so any understanding of what happened on Good Friday, A, we can't call good, but B, we can't fully understand or articulate without embracing what happens afterwards. This day tells us that we are not ultimately stripped. Jesus' body is raised. Jesus' body is clothed again in glory. The body of Christ lives. And friends, if that is not good news to share on this day or any other day, I just don't know what is. Thanks be to God. I've said these things to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.